All right, we're all set, Pete. Okay, welcome to the Town of Colony Planning Board. The meeting is hereby called to order. Um, with respect to the roll call, I'll say for the record that all seven members of the Planning Board are in attendance. Um, uh, third item on the agenda is a report of the Planning and Economic Development Director, and that would be Sean McGuire. Yeah, nothing uh, in depth for you today. Just, um, you know, we're moving along with the temporary outdoor seating permits. Uh, that's working out fine. And then I let folks know that there is going to be a uh, training from DEC, another webinar that'll be tomorrow. If you need that information, let me know. I'll get it back up. What's the topic of the webinar? Uh, it's about the environment and planning for the environment. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to the action items on the agenda. Uh, the first item is a waiver request. One residence in drive, also known as 1070 Troy Schenectady Road, uh, referred to as the Glen Apartments. Um, waiver requested for parking regarding change of use and conversion of existing hotel units into apartment units. And I'll ask the uh, town department whether they have any words to say before we turn it over to the applicant. No, we're, this is what you saw last week. Um, the applicant turned this around quickly to address the, the parking concerns. And so I'll let them uh, discuss that here. I oh, believe. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hi, this is Luigi Pelleschi with ABD Engineers. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yep. All right, great. Uh, yeah, I'm not on the actual uh, call. I just called in here, so I apologize. Uh, but anyways, uh, we did uh, turn things around uh, per our last meeting we had with this board last week. Um, I think the topic of concern was adding additional parking spaces off the gate, as well as uh, what to do and when to, when to do the uh, bank parking spaces. So we revised the plan uh, to include an additional 23 parking spaces right off the rip from what you saw which would get us to 167 parking spaces. Um, and then we're gonna bank an additional 21 parking spaces. Uh, if you take the 167 parking spaces that will be constructed as what I call phase one, um, we'll get you to a parking ratio of 1.49. So it's closer to what I had stated at the last meeting where uh, one and a half seems to be um, the norm for a lot of municipalities and, and this type of uh, de development. Um, and then I know with the planning department and the applicant, uh, we had discussed certain language as to when the uh, 21 banked parking spaces would be needed. And that also has been added to our site plan. Note number seven, um, basically, uh, you know, first warning, and, and I'm sure Mike Tangler can go over it. And I saw that it was part of the resolution, which we've reviewed and agreed to. Um, but basically, you know, a wave, um, the, the first, um, what do I want to say? The, the first um, complaint would be, the, right, the first complaint would, would go to the town uh, planning department. They would review it and see what could be done. And then after the second complaint, um, then there would be a different trigger that would require or may require, I should say, uh, the additional 21 parking spaces. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think from what we heard at the last planning board meeting, I believe we've addressed, you know, the, the, well, can I read the note? sorry. Can yeah. I... If, if you could, that would be great. If you want to read the resolution. No, no, no I'm sorry. I, I was still reading the note, Sean, uh, the last note that talked about sorry. note seven. I just wanted to keep that on the screen. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So what we had proposed was, you know, basically the conversation we had with planning department and um, Mike Tangler uh, adjusted the it slightly um, to, to what you see in the resolution. It's basically the same thing. Um, you know, so, you know, I don't know, obviously, you know, we're okay with the one that's in the, um, the resolution. And, and when we submit our final site plan, we can certainly update the note to match the resolution, um, you know, and, and pending any other comments that the, the board may have at this time. Do we have any pictures of the insides of the units? And do we know, I think I asked the square footage on the, on the studios. Yeah, pictures were shown at the last meeting, I believe. Um, and then as far as square footages, I 
believe they were added in the uh, revised narrative, but um, we do have Kurt and Robert on uh, the line here from F Street Boulder. I believe, right? Are they on or no? I saw some pictures, but they may be muted. I saw some gentlemen that may be from your. Yeah, yeah this is Kurt Smith. Sorry, I, I was muted. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, thank um, you. The square footages are on the uh, the revised narrative. But go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, on the um, on page, uh, I forget if it's page three or four. There's a unit mix. It states the square footage of the units. Uh, the studios are 440 square feet. Uh, the one bedroom traditional one bedroom unit is 505. The one bedroom by level is 780, and the two bedroom unit is 780 as well. So the square footage are there and noted in the um, project narrative. Okay, I, I appreciate you getting us that information. I, I think yeah. 440 is a pretty small place to, place to live on a permanent basis. And a one bedroom of 505 is pretty small. I'll just say that for the record. Um, thank you. Is the applicant done with their um, uh, presentation? Yes. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll go to the planning board. Uh, I'll start down the uh, virtual um, uh, row of uh, members that we have. Uh, Paul Rosano, do you have any comments on this? Uh, no, Peter, I'm satisfied with the revision. Thank you. Okay, Chip? Yeah, same here. Lou? Just so there's mis no misunderstanding, Luigi, you said after this, if there's a second complaint, you may have to... Uh, uh, in the 21. It's not May, it's you will. Well, well why, why don't you read, let's read the note. Why don't you read the note, somebody on our staff? Seven. You want to read note seven here? Yeah. Okay. It says, if the town of Colony issues parking citations are received, bona fide complaints about offsite parking due to insufficient on site parking at the Glen Apartments. The town of Colony will issue a warning upon the first complaint. If a second complaint occurs within the same calendar year, the town of Colony will issue a citation and may require the construction of 24 bank spaces. I'd like to compare that to the uh, resolution that I wrote and see if it's more amenable to the board. Well, okay. awesome. You've got it. You've got it in other places where it says they will. Yeah, that's the. It's 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 firmer language in my resolution. Lou, if you, Lou, Lou, if you don't mind, uh, let, let's as board members talk about what we think we really want. I think we want, uh, we want the town to have the power. Uh, oh, up. We need to act on it. You, you How do other board up. members feel about that? You broke up, Peter. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Let, if, if we don't, if, if you don't mind, because this is an important point for the board. What do, let's just talk in, in non-lawyer like terms. What do we what what do we want? If there's a second complaint, do we want the town to have the power to go, uh, open up the bank parking? Is that is that what we want? Correct. I thought Correct. that's yeah, what yeah. we were looking at from last week. Yes. And, okay. I, and I also think that we could make it up to 24 bank parking spots. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So okay. there is some um, flexibility. Uh, uh, okay, and I'll ask Kathleen. It, the, the way the language is there, and I, I appreciate the up to point. That's a good. That's a good thing. When they say the town may uh, require up to tw the twenty four bank park spots to be developed, should we be more specific as to who in the town should do that? Um, I mean, I, I think it's fine the way it is um, because the town, any department of the town, uh, it encompasses any department of the town. Okay. Um, I mean, we could, but then we'd limit ourselves, whether it's the town attorney or Sean's office or whatever, I think we should leave it the way it is. Okay. If I can say one thing but here. The problem that I have with that is then you could potentially have one department saying one thing and another part department saying another. Yeah, generally it's a plank department's uh, uh, jurisdiction on, on matters like this. We would be the ones uh, doing whatever enforcement is in place and it's consistent with our, you know, our general policy. If we get news of a violation, you put them on notice the first time. If within a year we get another violation, 
um, the consequences. I think we're sure. better at specifying. Well, okay, Let, let's talk about that, if everybody agrees. Chief, did you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, Sean, could you scroll down so you show the road going in, please? I think everybody has to understand one thing. I believe Residence Inn Drive is a town road. Is that yep. correct? Yep, that's correct. Well, there aren't parking restrictions on that road to begin with. So you're not going to be able to issue citations for parking on that road unless you ask the town board to um, limit parking there on, a, on an everyday basis. So the, the act of, re, of giving citations, you can't do it on the interior road because it's private property and the police department won't do it. I mean, you may want to go by the complaints, but to say that there'll be citations is, is a misnomer without the uh, addition of the parking restriction for the entire residence in drive. Um, the other thing, just as a slide comment, I, I went up there over the weekend and as much as I, I'm glad they're still banking and parking, I have to realize if we ever make them pave that bank parking, it'll totally destroy a extremely dense wooded buffer between them and the neighbor. Um, so people should, be, people should be aware of that. I think we got to hope that they can get by with the parking that they got. And if nothing else, keep the problems on, it, on their own property. And if not, the next step for the town would be to uh, establish no parking zone and then you'd have to go to the complaint stage. Uh, understood, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, that all being the case, uh, we could say either the director of PEDD or the town attorney, or we could say both of them have to direct that we uh, get into the bank parking. Do, do the board members have a feeling on that? We could do the P, the, de, the planning department in, in consultation with the town attorney's office. It's okay with me. Okay with me. I'm good. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. So we, we're agreeing with that on principle. Kathleen or somebody, can you look at the resolution while we, while we continue to discuss this to make sure the resolution conforms with that? And we'll, we'll ask that that note be revised as well. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Sean to do that because I don't have the resolution in front of me. Okay, Sean or Mike Tengler or whoever whoever from the department. Okay, uh, Lou, do you have any other questions or comments? Oh, that that was that was the big one right there was uh, as to may or will. Okay, uh, so it'll be up to the town board. The town board will have the power. They may do it. It'll be the P E D direct town planning board, right? What's that? The, the the director of the of planning. Yes, correct. In conjunction with the, the attorney. Yes, in consultation with the attorney is what right. we agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Susan, do you have any comments or questions? No. Craig? No. Chief? No, I'm good with it as it is. Okay. Uh, do we have to do anything with Seeker? Seeker's already been uh, completed and signed off. It's uh, You'll find it in your packet as an unlisted action. Okay, we don't need to vote on that. That's already been a determination. No. Okay, correct. Uh, with respect to the, uh, okay, so now let's get to the main resolution, which is the main, are there any members of the public looking to speak on this, Sean? Nope, nobody's here for this project. Okay, uh, can you walk us through, somebody walk us from the department, walk us through the resolution. All right, you want, I'll just, do you want me to do the whereas or I'll just go to the results? Read the title and then the resolves. And I'll, I'll ask the stenographer to put the resolution. Resolution, Glen Apartments, One Residence Inn Drive, AKA 1070 Choice Schenectady Road, Land Use Law, law Waiver Findings. Now there, therefore be it resolved that the board hereby finds that the extent of the requested waiver is not considered substantial and be it further resolved that the board finds that by granting the waiver, will still result in a reasonable and safe development of the site that will not hinder any town infrastructure, school districts, natural resources, or scenic view states. And be it further resolved that the board hereby issues the waiver granting an initial relief of 57 parking spaces with the ability to unbank an additional 21 parking spaces, reducing said relief to 36 spaces as required in Article 10. 190-47 in regards to parking requirements and be it further resolved that the planning and economic development director 
in consultation with the town attorney shall put the business on notice of violation if any related parking complaints are received by the town of Colony and mandate that the aforementioned 21 bar bank parking spaces be constructed shall a second complaint be received within one year's time from the first complaint and be it further resolved that these waiver findings be kept in the project file in the Office of Planning and Economic Development Department. Okay, I, I don't know if that last shall should be a may because it, it, I don't know if it mandates. Do you follow what I'm saying? It, it was right around the word mandate. Can okay. you read that little portion again? Okay. We'll ask, uh, Resolve that the Planning and Economic Development di Director okay. shall, in consultation with the town, I'm sorry, Resolve that the Planning and Economic Development Director, in consultation with the town yeah. attorney, shall put the business on notice of violation if any related parking complaints are received by the town of Colony and mandate that the aforementioned 21 bank parking space be constructed should a second complaint be received within one year's time from the first complaint. I think the issue there is before the word mandate, the word may should be inserted. And may mandate? May, yeah, may specify or may mandate. Yeah, I think that's what we were talking about. May require? May require. I had a little trouble hearing it because there was some interference. I hate to, can you just read it one more time, please? Okay. This is with uh, Kathleen's comment. Resolve that the Planning and Economic Development Director in consultation with the town attorney shall put the business on notice of violation if any related parking complaints are received by the town of Colony and may require that the aforementioned 21 bank parking spaces be constructed should a second complaint be received within one year's time from the first complaint. Uh, can you get the word up to in there as well? Up to 24? Up to 21? Or up to 21, whatever the number. 24, it says on the note. Yeah, it's on the plans, it says 24. Which is- Yeah, that's- I was gonna say, because when, when you have to put the aisle way in, you're gonna end up eliminating three parking spaces to get that, to get back in there for the bank parking spaces. So it would be 21. Okay. Yeah, hey, it's on the plan, page 21. Chief, Chief, how yeah. does how does that, uh, with what you brought up with the fact that what's gotta be uh, moved if we put the uh, new, if we require them to put the parking spaces in, how does that uh, second resolve look to you? Well, I just think we have to be careful if it ever comes to that point, it's just gotta be carefully investigated on whether, whether or not there is a true need to, to go into that space. Once you go into the space, I don't care whether you do it with 10 spots or 24 spots, you know, you're gonna create a total zone of what is now a, a wonderful natural buffer and it's not gonna be there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need an out. I don't think you must be specific in here that you're going to do something. I think that it'll be a case by case basis when it happens and leave it up to the departments and the town attorney to figure it out. All right. I've made in, in another adjustment. We'll read this one more time for everybody. Okay. Res resolve that the planning and economic development director, in consultation with the town attorney, shall put the business on notice of violation if any related parking complaints are received by the town of Colony and may require that up to 21 of the aforementioned bank parking spaces be constructed should a second complaint be received within one year's time from the first complaint. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, do we have a motion on that resolution? I'll make it, Peter. He makes the motion. Second. Two seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Uh, let the record show that we everyone voted in the positive. I did not hear any negatives. And I'm sorry, who seconded that motion? Lou? Yes. Lou. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Th thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thanks, okay, we're going right, to call up the next project for concept review. Troy Schenectady Road, Sam's Club Fueling Station. Um a site plan application for a fueling station in the southeast corner of the existing Sam's Club parking lot within Latham Farms, including a 136 square foot service building and a 4,787 square foot canopy with 16 fueling position, position station. Uh, do, uh, I'll ask the uh, department head, uh, Sean McGuire, if he has any comments before we turn it over to the applicant. 
Um, Zach has the file on this one, so I'll ask him yeah. to. Okay, sure, Doc. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, the board saw this back in February for sketch plan review, and we really, you know, the, the concern was the the layout around the actual fueling station, um, to where you'll see that the applicant decided to add more curved islands. Um, another way was the, the drive lane that's to the north side of it, and where the drive lane hits the existing roadway in Latham Farms. Um, the applicant... Uh, listen to the comments it, it feels like and uh submitted this to myself and uh the tde on the project and submitted concept for you guys okay um i'll say this i may be wrong i thought we were going to explore putting it up uh, moving that at least looking at sliding it over towards the north way so I, i'll just know for the record and i'll ask questions about that later um in other words to the west side of the park. west side yes yeah uh, okay, we'll turn it over to the applicant for their presentation. I think, is he muted? Keith, you there? Yes. There you go. Uh, this is Keith Moore. Um, I'm here representing uh, Dean L. Carlson um, here on his behalf. So um, we're the uh, civil engineer consultant working for Sam's Club on this project. And um, so, like uh, Zach had mentioned, we, uh, we we got a lot of feedback from uh, staff and, and planning and staff and uh, the board members at, at the last meeting, and uh, we tried taking that into account best we could. We felt the, the majority of the feedback was really towards separating the fueling station itself, you know, from the, the parking field, kind of prevent that pass through traffic where people are coming in that southeast corner and then angling through the parking lot. Uh, is our, you know, feel that that was the, the major concern with uh, with the majority of the uh, of the comments we received. We felt this was the, the best uh, option for addressing that concern um, and still, you know, pr providing a uh, a layout that, that works well as we feel as well. So I, I think the main thing is I'm just here to address any questions or comments that, that y'all might have. Okay, uh, this is uh, reviewed by our town designated engineer, uh, CHA, Joe Grasso. Joe, can you give us your comments? Yeah, Pete. Uh, so we, we do have a formal concept review letter dated May 28th um, in your packets. We have reviewed this project a couple of times. Um, you know, in general, you know, we agree with Zach that the applicant has done a good job addressing the comments that we've made throughout the process and comments that we've heard both from uh, planning and the various town departments. Um, you know, overall, from a layout perspective, we do feel like this improves the, the flow of circulation and provides good separation between the fueling use and the rest of the, the parking field, you know, for the Sam's Club. You know, based on our experience out there, this is a, it's a large parking field um, is significantly underutilized. And as traffic uh, approaches the front of the store, what we see a lot is a lot of vehicles are cutting diagonally across the, the, the parking rows. And that was something that we thought was an opportunity to address, you know, if, if, uh, if this new facility was going to be established on the site plan. So we, we think they've done that from a uh, site plan layout perspective and cutting in a lot of new islands, uh, not only around the fueling facility, but but uh, across the parking lot itself. Um, and then from a, a location standpoint, there, there was some concerns about where this was located in the parking field. One of the general concerns that we had um, expressed early on was the visibility of this facility from the Northway corridor. And we had always felt like the further away it could be from the Northway quarter, um, you know, the, the more the views towards the facility would be obscured um, by vegetation or just, uh, you know, distance separation. So we do feel like that where they've located it is a good location from the perspective of, of views from the Northway quarter. You, you know, um, you know, just speaking more about that, you know, there's a comment in our letter about concerns of the lighting the, of the facility. I think the, the board should be cognizant of the of the look of the facility, especially the the, the canopy, as well as the signage, the, you know, the, um, the gas prices that they've got 
uh, proposed on on various sides of the canopy, which you know those are elements that you know I think are going to be visible from the Northway quarter. So it's something that the planning board should be aware of. And if you've got a concern, um, you know this review is a good time to bring it up. You know, going through our some other items in our letter. Oh, you know, so is, can you hear me? Yep. Do you mind if I bring up that item as an item of discussion right now with the board since you just sure. made the presentation? Um, I, you know, I, I don't have strong feelings about this necessarily, but I do think it's something that I would le at least like addressed. I, I, you know, we haven't done any sight line views or anything like that, but I did drive by it a couple times and I don't necessarily agree about the visual impact from the Northway. Um, there's, I'll say a couple things and I'm not an engineer or, you know, landscape architect or anything, but the, I, I think, I think it's further away. I think it'll be a better uh, blockage of visibility than for instance, the RV park. Um, and I think probably if you think about uh, where Sam's club building and, and the impact that that has is, is probably similar because it's the same distance from the Northway. It's just in a different location. So it, I, I think there's a fair amount of vegetation between that corner of the parking lot and the Northway. And there's also a fair amount of distance and there's a, a little bit of screening on the Northway. Then you go into sort of a wetland, then the elevation rises. And then there's, there's several big trees back in that corner. So um, I, I guess I'd just like to hear what the other, other board members think now, now that we're on that topic. I mean, I'm not gonna go against the majority of the board, but I'm wondering if the other board members have an opinion. Anybody want to talk or no opinions? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll jump in. The, uh, can you hear me? Yes, it was a little little uh, scratchy, but yeah. Sorry, I'm having some internet connection problems at the moment. Um, I mean, I don't I don't think it's a big deal if it's shifted to the other side or or uh, visual from the north way either. I think there's an awful lot of other. As you head, first of all, as you head north, I think that you're not going to see it regardless of where it is, whether it's where it's positioned now or if we shifted it somewhere else. Um, you may have a little visual as you head south on the Northway, but I don't think it's, I, I think it's screened pretty well, no matter whether it stays where it is or whether it's shifted to the other side of the parking lot. Anybody else have any comments or opinions? I would agree with that. Peter. What, what would your preferred spot be, Chief? I, I think where it is, I think, that, that, listen, it's a gas station. There's no great place to put it. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference what one side or the other. Uh, my only c c question is, it, it looks like the curved end of the corridors, there's like four different styles. And I'm just curious about that. But um, I'd, I'd actually rather see it away from the north okay. to where it is here than versus on the other side. Okay. Anybody else have an opinion they want to voice? I, I, think, I, do, I think where it's at now would be is better. I, I like it where it is now only because when the people when the cars start leaving the gas station, at least they'll have a, they'll be able to disperse. Or if you put them closer to the northway, you've got that the main road there, and you might end up uh, creating a queuing problem. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else want to speak? I, I agree with Lou. Okay. Okay, I think it sounds like we have support for where it is, unless unless somebody else wants to say anything. Yeah, this is Keith Morgan. I just wanted to uh, just give y'all a uh, kind of background on why we chose this location to start with, and a couple issues that that we uh, why we initially started here. Um, first is it's the most remote location in our parking field from the main club entrance. Obviously, the the further you can separate those two uses apart, the better off you are. Uh, just because, like I said, you have the, the customers um, entering the club, but also, you know, it's just obvious that the parking stalls closer to the front door are going to be the ones that fill up the first. So with this parking area being the most remote from the club, it, it made the most sense from that perspective. Also, um, the parking lot is graded so that it drains basically from east to west. Um, and there's, since we had that Primer Island a perimeter curb on the east side of our current layout there's no water really coming onto us right now from the east however if we place it over there on the west side there would be some water coming through us plus there's a, uh, a storm sewer that that starts kind of in the in the middle of the parking area that we would have to 
deal with working around it. So it just isn't ideal from that standpoint either. Um, so the, that, that was why we initially chose this location, and we just feel that it works best for our operations as well. A um, couple other things that were touched on while we were going through that, I'd, I'd like to just hit quickly. Um, the lighting, we'll absolutely be glad to provide photometrics for this uh, fueling station. Um, the, the lights we use are LED, and they are uh, full recessed into the, the canopy itself. They're, obviously, they're, they're quite bright right at the canopy itself. But as soon as you get, you know, 10, 15 foot away from it, the lighting levels really drop off substantially. And we'll show that with the, the photometrics plan with the next submittal. We'll, we'll make sure to include that. Um, and there's also the question about the different sizes of those curved islands for the new uh, uh, east-west drive that we're proposing. The reason for that is since this is an existing parking field, um, we had to size those so that they started where they align with an existing parking stall strike. So since uh, all the parking stall strikes aren't uniform in, in where they end up at along that length, we just had to modify the width of the island so that it aligned with those strikes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joe, can you continue with your presentation? Yeah, so our, our, uh, our first comment was on the, the green space. The green space on the site actually goes up slightly because of the, uh, the, the landscaped islands that they're cutting in. Uh, the second comment is about the parking. Obviously, you know, um, they're locating this uh, pad in an area where there's a lot of existing parking. So there's going to be a, a, you know, a reduction from 826 spaces on this, on this lease parcel down, uh, down, down to 583, um, which won't meet the town's uh, typical parking requirements. So a, a parking waiver will be required um, and it should be uh, noted as such on the plans. We are supportive of the parking waiver based on our experience on the site. This, like I said before, the site is over parked and, and this is a better utilization of, um, you know, the, the abundant parking that's out there that doesn't get used on a regular basis. Um, there is some, some you know, um, a, a, a case that needs to be made to support the parking waiver and that's something that the applicant will have to uh, put together. We also, you know, would like them because this is a shared parking site with with other parking areas around the lease parcel. We would like that factored into the evaluation. Um, you know, one thing that we've seen, you know, for for sites that have these kiosks or storage buildings that don't aren't designed to have a a restroom facility and therefore don't have water and sewer facilities. But we would we always ask the applicant to check with the, the building department to see if any variances from the New York State Building Code would, would be required to uh, allow this kiosk not to have a, um, a restroom and therefore no need to provide water and sewer um, to the facility. So that's something that the applicant can just follow up with the Town of Colony Building Department on. Um, we had a, a comment about the cross access aisle. I, I apologize, that was actually a, a carryover comment from our uh, our sketch plan review, and they actually did exactly what we had asked with that cross access aisle, which I think is a really important part of the of the site plan. Um, next comment is about the the limited disturbance. Uh, you know, clarifying that one acre is a is a big threshold from a stormwater management perspective, and we think that they're going to be under an acre, but we can only verify that when they actually show us what the limited disturbance would be. Um, you know, because of the, the large islands that are being constructed around the fueling facility, um, you know, we're concerned about the truck, the, uh, the, the fueling delivery truck uh, turning movements and how that's going to impact the, the curbs uh, or other operation of the, um, of the site. So we would like to see, you know, truck turning templates, you know, shown on the plan for the town's review. Uh, the next comment was just, you know, getting into some detail of the grading. Keith was talking about the drainage. They, they're definitely, um, you know, they've done their homework and they've, they've got an understanding of how the, the drainage works out there. Um, but obviously, we're going to need some additional detail over that design when, when it comes back for, for final review. Um, you know, stormwater runoff from a fuel, fueling facility is considered a hot spot by DEC. So it does trigger the need for some special uh, provisions, and that's something that will need additional information 
on as part of the final site plan application. And then Keith talked about, you know, um, you know, being willing to provide the town additional photometric information regarding the lighting plan, um, you know, as the as the plan moves to final. And you know, although we're we're not really concerned about the amount of cutoff of the light because we're you know this pad is within you know a large commercial site surrounded by parking areas, so whether or not the light gets appropriately cut off is, is less important. The glare is very important, and the use of you know, fully recessed, you know, dark sky compliant fixtures is is uh, strongly encouraged. And Keith mentioned that that's that's the way they're designing it. You know, when we look at the lighting levels um, and the and the brightness or the or the Kelvin temperature or the whiteness of the light, those are things that you know we want to be um, you know sensitive to and not make this uh, pad overly bright. You know, more than it needs to be for. A fueling facility. So that's something that we'll take a close look at as the uh, additional, you know, lighting design information gets submitted. But we, you know, Keith is obviously, you know, uh, trying to design sensibly. So I'm sure that'll be reflected in the final plans. Um, next comment was just regarding some additional traffic control signage on the site. And then from a seeker standpoint, uh, because of the, the small size of the facility, the town attorney's office has classified it as a type two action. So no additional seeker will be required, you know, before the planning board takes uh, action on the site plan application. So okay. that's, where, that's where we are with our review. Okay, Bef uh, we, this is the point where we normally turn it over to the public and uh, Sean can tell us if anybody's waiting to speak. I know you got a letter or an email, which is essentially like a letter. Um, if we, we can either read that into the record or, or, or have the major points in. I think Kathleen's position is to read it in and then the board will have that. I, I, and then the board member, it'll be on the record anyways, and the board member will hear it. I think John, the letter writer is on the, uh, on the screen, Peter. Yeah. John, did you want to present your, your letter to the board? I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Chief, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, the letter's on the screen. Is that yeah. If you can put up with me reading it, that's, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, most of the what I've got to say has to do with let's see the site plan of the finished product. I think it's John, the fifth you, John, if you just give your name and address for the record, <laughs> thank you. John Peggy, 46 Perry Avenue, Latham. Okay, the site plan I'm looking at is uh, probably about the fifth page in your packet. I mean, I'm going by what was put the agenda. Uh, it's the finished product type plan. And most of the, his comments are going to be at the south side of that. All right. Uh, up, you ready? All yeah. Right. You can hear me okay? Great. Uh, right up the get go. I mean, 16 fuel hoses. Uh, I don't see how that fits with, uh, let's see, quote, an existing shopping trip to the Sam's Club. So, in my opinion, the, the size of it says the applicant expects to find uh, a lot of uh, business. And it'll be a destination, in my opinion, will be a destination for uh, any and all club members in the area. And that would translate to more parking. Now, I understand it's on the inside, it's an interior thing, but it's a lot of traffic moving around in there. Uh, and there is no access from the store parking lot. You have to come out onto that uh, driveway or whatever it is on the south side. So that just people coming in making new turns. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the two full function entry exit points at the south side intersect the driving lane, which already sees heavy traffic use going to and from, say, Hannaford. I use it. Uh, and uh, let's see, Latham Farms, Home Depot, Dick's, All Star, places like that. It's easier than going back through the four way intersection. They just save a lot of time. They find themselves uh, an easy way in. So I, I think there's going to be an awful lot of traffic conflict on that road down there. That driving lane also contains marked parking places, which until recently were occupied almost daily and even for an entire week by tractor trailers just sitting there. I don't know why, what. They disappeared recently, but they've been there. They were there last winter. They were a mess. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, I just see a lot of comp uh, complex turning movements and queuing and everything right there on that road, especially where it intersects the driveway to the east. People are cutting, come across from Hannaford, going in and out of Hannaford, cutting back and forth in, on that side road. It, it, it does tend to get congested and it's, it's a pretty busy place. Uh, let's see. But hey, I'm not an engineer either. So I just sort of go what, based on what I see when I'm in, in that place. Um, then and within the property, uh, vehicles making U-turns to the command, take the fuel, U-turn in, interiorly to come back out. I mean, that puts an awful burden on that driveway. Uh, let's see. Yeah two, yeah, two words that came to my mind were... Uh, frenzied and manic <laughs> if you see those people over there i don't know why they just don't turn that thing 90 degrees have the main access in the sam's club parking lot which you say is under parked with a that one way out on that north south driveway to me it would relieve a lot of congestion okay it and but again at that 16 fueling hoses to me it's just says a lot, a lot of business. And reduce it by half, then you're down to a Stewart's. And that's, you know, the Stewart's by me gets a lot of business, but that can get hairy at times too. Let's see. And I don't know if there's any other Sam's clubs around the area that have a uh, gas facility. And if, if they don't, if there aren't any, or there are few, people are gonna be coming, all Sam's members, are going to be coming from all parts of the capital district to buy the cheap gas. I mean, it only stands to reason. And, uh, and it, you know, just at an editorial point here, I mean, how many fuel pumps are there in Colony? You know, and how many new ones has this board approved in the last five years? And, and we don't suffer from the shortage of gas stations. So somebody's going to be eating somebody else's lunch here. So in closing, I just, I really think you ought to adjourn your vote until the public could be involved. And the reason I say that is the agenda itself never hit the PEDD website, web page until yesterday morning. They hit the portal page today, sometime at, probably after 10 o'clock and the uh, button for uh, application packet has no documents in it. They were, I had to go back to the website. It was great. It was good. I like this format where we're seeing this stuff before the meetings, but I just don't think the public's had a chance to weigh in. And, and I think maybe I can give it a second thought as to the size of this thing. I, mean, I just hate to think that you know, we have a gas crisis. Sparrow Bush Road is going to look like a parking lot. So, you know, I'll just leave it over to you folks. I mean, the turning at 90 degrees just occurred to me a little while ago. I, I think it would make a, a, a more controlled uh, flow of traffic in there. They're going to lose the parking places anyway. They're still going to have an overabundance, I think. And just move that, all that traffic movement inside. So I'll leave it over to you. If you guys have any questions, you know, shout out. And I hope we get back to the meeting room soon. Okay, thank so you. For your comments. If my grandkids could see me now, they'd be laughing like crazy. Grandpa playing with the iPad. <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing great. You're with the, in the <laughs> world for sure, like we all are. Um, Joe Grasso, to the extent you feel necessary, do you, do you want to address any of that? Um, yeah, I, I will speak to it. And 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 John, you know, raises. You know, I think he came across very clear with his comments. You know, from my perspective, I actually like the layout and, and I like the orientation. Um, I like the fact that you have to pull into the into the main, you know, uh, cross drive aisles before you pull into the the fueling facility. So I actually like that feature, and I think that's it's an important way to try to control the circulation of vehicles. There is another way out. You know, you can actually pull out of the fueling and go straight towards the store. You're not forced to come back. That is a relatively narrow curb cut, and that is something that we can look at. And and whether or not it's 
it's in the right location. It doesn't exactly line up with a, a drive aisle towards the north. Um, you know, maybe it's got to be wider. Maybe it's got to be shifted. You know, maybe the site plan would benefit with with two curb cuts there onto that cross drive aisle. But we like the fact that vehicles that enter and exit the fueling facility are coming from and leaving by these cross parking aisles. We think that's a really important feature and will help control the circulation no matter how busy it is. I understand, um, you know, if we're, if we're dealing with 16 pumps and you look at the amount of queuing lines that they're providing, it could be a high volume, but, you know, this is a commercial site and I think you know, based on the way it's been designed, it's it's designed to accommodate a high turnover of, of traffic. So I don't share the same concerns about the circulation that we would see, you know, if you're looking at, uh, you know, a convenience store site plan um, where, where the the amount of activity around the fueling is, is then affecting other operational characteristics of the site. I think this is, this is designed as well as possible um, for the scale of the facility. And that's obviously something that the board, you know, should, you know, consider, you know, um, but I think you have to look at it in the context of the overall scale of the site too. Whereas when we're looking at a convenience store, there's a big difference between, you know, 16 fueling positions and maybe a canopy with, with eight or 12. Yeah, they're proposing 16, but given the scale of the site, I think they've it can accommodate it. Um, but that's obviously something that the board should, uh, should, you know, consider in their deliberations. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, we'll take comments from the board, Chief. No, I'm, my only question is, and I'm trying to figure out why it's a do not enter from that, the, the, the aisle that goes across from the old parking. You know, I can just see people coming through there instead of going around. You know, um, it's very narrow as um, um, it was just talked about, you know, as far as getting trucks and stuff in there. I don't know the reason why that has to be a do not enter there. Yeah, uh, that, Chief, uh, this is Joe. We may want to let Keith speak to that. I, I, ha I, I have a feeling it's because of how they like to see the traffic flow. You know, because you've got so many cars coming out of the fueling positions, I would think that they don't want any opposing traffic there. But I think I think we should let Keith speak to how it how they typically operate yes that's exactly right we want everybody to, to come in from the rear of the fuel station um, because everybody is exiting there on the north side this is a, a one-way fuel station um, you have to come in from the, the south and, and flow north and then like joe said you have the option of, of either making that u-turn if you want to or leading through that curb cut to the north um, but just it, by preventing people from coming in there, it, it just helps avoid any congestion or, or issues with, you know, stoppages slowing down. So that, that, that's the, the reason for that. And the, the other question I had, Peter, was the original plan showed water and sewer to the building. I'm just curious why they took it out. Uh, we, we were looking at doing a, we, uh, the standard um, fuel station that, that SAMS does ha has a, uh, a small restroom in it for the attendant. Um, and we were, there's no water or sewer nearby that, that we could tie into. There is a water main um, up along the front of the club that we, we could have pulled domestic service from. However, the, the sewer for, the, for all the buildings around us are, they all have sewer service from the back sides of the buildings. So there is literally no public sewer available to us uh, that, that was readily accessible. We talked it over with Sam's, with the uh, architect and the uh, mechanical engineer and just due to the constraints um, uh, of getting water and sewer to, to this fuel station, they decided that, that it wasn't warranted. The, the attendant has the ability to go into the club if, if you know, need be to access the restrooms in there. I guess, I guess then my question is, is you have one attendant in the building. When he leaves that building and walks across that park lot and then goes to a restroom, what happens to the gas pumps? Is the place totally unattended at that point? I, I really honestly, I can't answer that fully. I don't know exactly how they staff this. I know there is some overlap in when, when the, there, there's more than just one person working there. Um, I do know that, that we do have data and telephone uh, lines connecting the, the fueling station to the club. 
so they, they can communicate with somebody at the club, ask somebody to come out and relieve them temporarily if need be is how I would imagine that would happen. But I, I don't fully know that answer, but I can find that out for the next board meeting if, if need be. I guess the question would be, does New York have any code that mandates somebody being at that fueling station during the entire time that people are fueling their cars? That's right. And that is, that's more of a, a, a building related code. That, that's why I just can't fully speak to that. Um, but if there is a code requirement like that, then, then that's something the architects would be aware of and, and they would pass that on to, um, to, to Sam's and they would make sure that there are provisions in place to ensure that we meet that code requirement. All right. That's all, Peter. Okay. Uh, Craig? Yeah, the, um, I guess the, I mean, initially I was a little concerned about the, the one way and then I actually got to thinking about some of the Sam's Club that uh, uh, fueling stations I've been to as well as Costco and most of them are one way and they seem to work. So uh, I became less concerned about that. I do think that that location of that, that should either be oriented directly across from a drive aisle or directly to one of the curb islands. Um, but other than that, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's a good use, for, quite frankly, for the, for the, uh, that corner of the parking lot. I think it's, it is just blank parking that, that never gets used. And, you know, when we compare the number of fueling, fueling uh, points to a typical C store, this is just fueling. There's no, you know, there's no C store associated where we're, where we're always concerned about conflicting traffic. So generally speaking, I, uh, I'm in favor of the project as it is. Susan? I just have a question. What is the distance from, not the do not enter, from the curb to like the, the fuel, whatever that, okay. We're, the, okay, there you go. It's hard, um, not the do not enter, but the, the curb closer on the other side down to where the the um, fuel dispensers or the, or the canopy would be. So I'm talking, no, go to where it's uh, the line below, do not enter, where the, below the arrows, there you go. From there, go straight down. What's that distance about? That's 30 feet from the curb to the edge of the canopy. Okay. So, you know, you, you have enough for, for two, two vehicles, you know, to travel plus, we left a little extra right there in case somebody decides to nose up a little too far. That, that way they have added room. So it's an extra wide drive to, to take all that into account. And, and here's my concern. And you can get that all the front, all the, I'll call them the front, the ones closest to the do not enter. Um, those pumps are all full. And now you have a car that wants, you know, they're impatient. So they're going to travel around and then go to, we'll say the one to the far left. Now they're going to be facing the other way. So is there adequate space for that car to then turn around without causing congestion? Well, Do you know well, what I'm saying? This is designed to be a one-way um, flow through. So you, you enter from the south and then you basically, at that point, you pick which set of pumps you want to commit to. I mean, you, you have the ability to change a little there, um, but once you get, get kind of committed in, then, then if, if you don't like the lane you're in, then you can circle back around, but there's the ability like to, to make that U-turn like we were uh, discussing earlier. Well, people are impatient. And so what I can see happening is they go and they don't want to wait because all the, all those, they, those eight, the one of the, all eight of those are all full. So then what they're going to go do is go around and then pull in. Oh, yeah, there's, there's enough room uh, there where we've got the, kind of the, the dashed lines that's a 11 foot wide drive where somebody can pull in between there. So they can pull up and then almost like parallel park, you know, to get in front of the person uh, that, that's at the rear pump. Is, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, so and then there's what... enough room for somebody to, to pull in between. So if you have somebody at all 16 pumps, say, you can right. still drive a car in between each, each one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's an escape route if you if you're stuck in queue. That's right. Yeah, and, and you can you can swing around the if there's a person at the closest pump to the queue, 
you can swing around them and then back up to get lined up with, with the front fueling pump. Okay. That was my only concern. Okay, good, good questions. Uh, Lou? Um, is this a credit card only operation or do they have cash in the kiosk there? All uh, payment is done at the pump. So it's credit card only. First thing you have to do is swipe your membership card to, to show that you're a member. And then it's, um, it's with either your credit or debit card after that. The, the attendant is just there just for, for safety and to make sure, you know, operation and maintenance are working right that they don't handle any actual transactions. Okay, so I think that might alleviate your question, Chief, that you had about the person. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I just don't know if there's any code that we, when you have 16 fueling stations, is there any code that it has to be personally supervised by somebody? Yeah. I know BJ's has a very similar thing, right? Like person in a booth and no cash is ever exchanged. It's strictly, it's, it's the identical thing. It's a membership card, credit card, debit card, yeah. take gas and away you go. So very similar. Well, if there's a fuel spill, you know, inadvertent fuel spill, they do react pretty quickly at gas stations. So may, the code is the code. So I guess yep. we'll. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that they can be completely unattended. I think only private fueling uh, facilities can do that. Well, I think the way they do it at, at, at BJ's, at least what I've seen, is somebody's in the kiosk, and if they got to go to the building for something, they go, then they come back to the kiosk. They're not gone long is, I guess, the point. Okay. okay. That, that, that's all. But I like, I like the project. I like where it's located. I, I think it's good. Chip? Yeah, I have a, I have a problem with the, uh, with the kiosk. How come it's not underneath the uh, uh, canopy? They used to do that. That was the Sam's proto layout for years and years. And what, what they realized was that the, the less obstructions and interferences they have with people trying to pull up to the pumps and, and get there and get out, the, the better operations of it works. Um, so th this, it is a relatively newer thing to, to, for Sam's at least, to put the kiosk offset to the side like that. But just from trial and error, they, they learned that that works best for the overall operations of the, uh, of the fuel station. Yeah, the, uh, but it's, it's at least 600 feet from the kiosk to the uh, building for the guy to relieve himself. Don't you do something with a chemical toilet or something like that? Keith, has your architect contacted the building department? I truthfully do not know. I know we've discussed it and they did make mention that that was going to, to be something that, that they would have to do. Just usually they like for us to get a little further along on, on the okay. civil side side before they, they really get engaged. Um, but definitely since it's obviously a, a, a question that, that is on everybody's mind, um, I'll you know, let them know and, and see if we can go ahead and get those conversations rolling so that we can get answers on that pretty quick. And I mean, if it is something that it, it says that we have to provide a, a restroom at the kiosk, then we can go back and look and, and see what options are available to us. And, you know, that, that, that might be something have a, <laughs> I don't know, a port of, port of John would be the answer, but we'll, we'll see what all options we have and, and which ones make sense. In my, in my previous profession, uh, I worked for the building department. So that's why I was asking you to contact them. Typically, I think that there's a requirement if you're over 500 feet from the building. So that's just something that your architects don't really want to bring in uh, early to them. Um, and then if not, you can always go for the variance. Right. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, bubble that up you know, for them to start tracking down. Okay. Anything else, Chip? No, that takes care of it. Well, Yes, uh, this question, Joe, for Joe Grasso. Yeah. Joe, uh, the movement through the gas pumps, uh, we talked not too long ago about people towing trailers. And since it's so close to the RV place, somebody towing a, a yep. massive RV, uh, the movement out of the drive lines through the pumps to that exit is, yep. is you, I, I think the radius of that out should be widened up quite a bit. Uh, to make, in case they do want to go to Sam's 
or out that way? Seems yeah, a little tight. That, yeah, that uh, that's a good point um, for trailers. So Keith, if, if when you're running those truck turning templates, it would be good to to know if if vehicle you know passenger vehicles are towing an RV if they're going to be able to make all of those movements as well. It's a little bit deceiving, Paul, because um, you know the scale of the site plan. It you know it looks relatively tight there, but you know those are thirty foot wide drive aisles, which are wider than a normal one at twenty four feet wide. So I assume that they do have adequate clearances there, um, and and that curb cut that 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 leaves to the north looks narrow, but then again it's it's just one way. So you've got two side by side. Uh, vehicles there so even that's 24 feet wide which is you know plenty plenty wide enough to accommodate uh cars but i think that's a that's a really good comment about how the site would operate with uh rvs being towed yeah, see most of the time my my experience has been the people towing rvs they do it twice a year up to up to the camp and down to the down and they're not exactly professional drivers yep and they need all the room they can get and i just don't want to see some sort of a hang up there um you know, maybe even I, I'm not going to put this put this out there. Maybe even contacting like Albany RV and just asking them full full truck with the biggest trailer they have, showing them these movements if they felt that they would be comfortable, you know, going through this. Because I know we talked about the uh, the gas station over on Central Avenue because you know people are trying to come in there with their their uh, landscape trailers and things like that. And these look, I mean, the width between the pumps looks fine. It just that movement out with being 30 foot. Um, you know, I just like somebody to look at that real quick and just, just yeah. get an opinion on it. That's all. Yeah. And I can tell you, you know, I, I haven't run the RV, you know, uh, maneuvering through there, like you're speaking with the trailer on it, but the, the fuel delivery truck, um, it, it loops in order to get to where the tanks are located at, it has to loop all the way around the outside perimeter of the, the fuel station to uh, to get to the tanks and then also leave again. So you know we feel pretty confident about about that maneuvering. So um, I, you know that, that works. We run the route, and I know it's a comment on here to provide, which we will in the next middle to show that. So I feel like that uh, an 18 wheeler can make it all the way around the fuel station to, to service the, the fuel pumps or the fuel tank. So um, there, there's like, like Joe said, it, it is kind of deceiving to the scale of this because it's on a you know large Sam's Club development, so it makes stuff look a little smaller than it really is sometimes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions from the board? Yes, Peter. Um, can you tell me the hours of operation that you plan we on? Generally, generally follow the club, um, the, the hours that the club is open. They usually like to try to open the fueling station an hour or so early compared to the club and then keep it open an hour or so late afterwards, but roughly it, it will match what the club is. And that's approximately what time do you generally? Uh, I want to say it's going to be like 7 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m., somewhere in that range. And then the signage that's shown on the picture that the Photograph, but that pretty uh, accurate representation of what the signage would be. Yes, ma'am. That, that is the well, the kind of standard SANS logo and a uh, ice reader that, that they would like to uh, see uh, for a standard, I guess, fueling station like this. And then the, are the the I presume they're LED lights. Are they on all four sides? That's correct. I mean, the only thing I'd like to see is just to minimize as much as possible the view from the north way, um, whether it's not having the, the numbers there or just whatever can be done to just to minimize the impact from there. Okay. No, can you give that some thought too as you review the plans? Yeah, yeah, I mean, no doubt. I mean, the, the, the end of the canopy that's facing you know the north way the uh, in a narrow dimension you know obviously the the numbers aren't going to be visible from the north way even if the you know from that distance so you know okay. maybe there's some options regarding elimination of that one and and maybe looking at the uh the location on the other the, the two long side elevations um but yeah we'll give it some thought okay anything else from the board 
Okay, uh, we, we've given it, given it a fair amount of deliberation so far and it's up, uh, the application is for concept acceptance, which is not an approval, but just an indication that um, it would be ready for, uh, for, for the next stage in the application. Do we have a motion for concept acceptance? Make a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, that's Chip seconding it. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Uh, the record show that I didn't hear any nay, any no votes. Uh, the motion for concept acceptance is approved. Thank you. Uh, Sean, is there any further business before this board? No, that brings us to the bottom of the agenda. Okay, our next meeting is uh, July 7th, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, see everybody then. Thank you and stay safe. Have a great night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Yeah.